Hello, I'm Cindy Ehrenberg Seltzer, President and CEO of the Children's Services Council of Broward County. Welcome to Future First, Focus on Broward's Children. Did you know that nearly 60% of children in Florida qualify for free or reduced price meals? That is 1.6 million children at risk of going hungry on any given day, especially when school is not in session. The Florida Partnership to End Childhood Hunger serves as the hub for local organizations across the state working strategically and in concert to address hunger and undernutrition through a number of federally funded programs. In addition to newly implemented guidelines for serving breakfast and after school meals, Florida is engaged in the Summer Food Service Program, where local nonprofits and schools make sure kids in their communities don't go hungry during the summer. Summer Break Spot is Florida's USDA Summer Food Service Program, providing free, nutritious meals to all children under age 18 throughout the summer when they lose access to school meals. The Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services, the Florida Partnership to End Childhood Hunger, and Florida 211 partner to increase families' awareness about this program. Some of the local partners joining me today to discuss the range of community action in Broward aimed at eliminating childhood hunger are Brian Quayle, CEO of the Boys and Girls Clubs of Broward County, Cesar Garcia, Director of Parks and Recreation for the City of West Park, Robin Bartleman, School Board Member at Large and currently Chair of the Children's Services Council of Broward County, and Michael Farver, President of the Board of Directors of Florida Impact. Welcome everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining me today. Michael, I want to start with you because you have that global statewide view. How did you get involved in this issue? What brought you to it? Well, it's been about 20 odd years now. I started out at the grassroots level. I was a volunteer for Share Our Strength, uh, uh, fundraising at the local level, and eventually spent uh, time with them nationally as chair of the National Advisory Board. And about eight years ago, joined the Board of Florida Impact. And uh, Florida Impact serves as the convening agency in the state of Florida with this public-private partnership. Um, the uh, of groups from everything from the school boards to uh, faith-based groups to um, corporations, all united around the issue of finding a way to end childhood hunger. I know you've been great partners with us at the Children's Services Council every step of the way as we've been looking at this issue. And you've been, you've been a, a, a great partner as well. Uh, what I find amazing is uh, over the years, uh, as I said, having been around here 20 odd years, to see the level of cooperation as the group here can testify to the, the change in the last five or six years has been pretty dramatic, again, as the issues become more and more in, in the public eye. What's really sad is we've been joining forces more and more, as folks are going to hear, and yet the problem is getting worse and worse. Of course, the economy tanked, but Robin, you were talking uh, to me earlier about the rate at which children are going hungry. Oh, over 60% of the students in our county are on free and reduced lunch. Um, and people don't understand how important it is that a child is fed breakfast before they enter the classroom. Uh, there have been studies done and research shows that, you know, standardized test scores go up. They're able to have a longer attention span. It decreases behavioral problems. I was a classroom teacher and I can tell you firsthand that, you know, I. I can be standing in front of that classroom doing cartwheels and if that child's stomach is growling and they haven't eaten since lunch the day before, they're not going to be able to concentrate and they're not going to be able to learn. So it's a priority for the school district to make sure that all of our students participate in the breakfast program and the lunch program. And what I spoke to you about was that many of our students are not taking advantage of the free breakfast that's offered to them. Uh, we're the sixth largest district in the nation, second largest in the state out of 67 counties, but our participation rate in breakfast is we're number 54 out of 67. So we need to find a way to feed these children because we know that when they eat breakfast, they're going to perform better in school. I'm going to say the stigma. I mean, I think it's crazy that people should, should be stigmatized or feel stigmatized such that they won't participate in actually getting fed. That's so sad. Right. Well, it's not just middle school. Is, the stigma really comes into middle school. The kids don't want to go into the cafeteria. They don't want to. They're very social. I have a 14-year-old daughter in middle school, so it's all about standing in the hallway, hanging out mm -hmm. with your friends. You don't want to be the one to go in the cafeteria to get that food. So we have piloted at four middle schools a grab-and-go breakfast program 
where students can actually grab a bag of breakfast and then still be able to hang out with their peers and speak with them. And at the elementary school program, it's sometimes it's bus schedule, parents getting the child to school late. So we're really trying to think out of the box and look at possibly even having breakfast in some of our classrooms for the students to take advantage of that. I mean, we're adults and, you know, by the end, middle of the day when we're starving, we can't concentrate, we can't get our work done. So imagine these students and, you know, they're, they're in a classroom and for some of our students, the only, you know, nutritious meal they get is the breakfast that's offered to them at school and lunch. And they go home and there's not food there and they're hungry, so we're the ones providing the meals for them. You know, it, one of the things that I find is being kind of on the other spectrum at the end of the day as an after-school provider. And what Boys and Girls Clubs of Broward County is really uh, very proud about is that we were the first after-school program in the state of Florida and the first Boys and Girls Club <coughs> in the state of Florida to enact the after-school meal program. So last year we served over 400,000 healthy snacks and meals at the end of the day before kids went home at night. And this year, I'm glad to report as of this taping, uh, we've served over 348,000 snacks and meals. Wow. And the effect that we're seeing is that the incidence of just club bad behavior, you pointed out something, when you don't, when you're hungry, you can't concentrate uh, and think about it. Right. When we're hungry, we're really not in a great mood. We're cranky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. yeah. And, I keep a load of snacks in my office. Uh, exactly. Just that. <laughs> and the interesting thing about all this is that as, you know, community funders in, uh, that we work in partnership with uh, CSC and, you know, Moran Foundation, United Way, and others, uh, what we have found is that our average daily attendance has gone up by 24 percent this year. Last year it went up by 15 percent overall when we put the program in. And you know 69 percent of our members are in free and reduced lunch programs in the schools. Uh, and 93 percent of our kids attend Title I schools. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day what we're kind of seeing is that great things are happening and uh, you know the, the Florida Partnership to End Childhood Hunger uh, gave us the Trendsetter Award for the first agency to, to go out and do this. And I can't tell you though where it really comes down to is that child or that family that comes up to you in a club. Uh, I was at the Heisinga unit and a little boy came up to me and said, uh, hey, are you the food guy? <laughs> and I, I laughed and I said, well, kind of. And I said, why do you say that? He said, well, you know, my mom, uh, it's just my mom and I at home. And some nights, uh, you know, or what we're going to eat for a week is just a peanut butter sandwich. Just a peanut butter sandwich? And he said, yeah, and I eat that maybe in the morning, but I'll definitely have it at night when I go home. Now that I'm eating these meals in the club, he said, I can't tell you, this is great. So when I hear, you know, facts and figures, they're all important, but when you see it front line every day, um, there's just something about what we've got here. We've, we've got to get it out more. And you know, thank you for having this forum today because I know, Caesar. you know, you may want to talk a little bit about what you're all doing too. Well, um, thank you very much. We have the issue with, with infractions. You know, with our program being a juvenile crime prevention program, um, we get a lot of the kids that can't focus, can't, can't, can't pay attention. And then when they come into my office and I sit there and I ask them the question, well, what happened? What's wrong? I, I used to delve into what the problem was, but now my first question is, is what'd you eat today? Right. And now I, I, I delve into what's going on at home before we even get to why they're actually in the office. And then it's been easier to then diagnose and, and say, all right, okay, well, this is, this is the course of action that we need to actually fix a problem. And really, I never noticed how much of a factor it was, but remembering my own childhood, being, a, you would say, a product of the environment, I play it back and it had a huge, you know, uh, actual reasoning behind why I acted the way that I did. Right. Right. And, and these programs, what I love is that this isn't just eating food, this is eating healthy food. Right. Well, that's the nutrition aspect of it, exactly. which is so important. You know, you see a lot of uh, commentary on the issue of childhood obesity. And um, I, I always talk, someone will say to me, oh, you know, these kids can't be hungry because they're overweight. 
Well, when your uh, breakfast comes out of a vending machine, right. um, you're not having any fresh fruits and vegetables because you live in a food desert where there aren't that uh, access to, to that at, at home. Uh, it's, it's natural and it's a lot cheaper. I mean, calories can be cheap. Right. And so what's great about the way the partnership is working at, at, across the state is that there is no one cut and dried solution for any of these situations. You mentioned some of the options on the breakfast uh, program. Um, whether it's grab and go, whether it's universal school breakfast, which says anyone that wants it can have it, doesn't have to get in a special line for the free and reduced price. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, you start recognizing all these other factors that come into play, and uh, everyone that at this table is addressing them in, in different ways because they're all different solutions that are available. And I want to point out that the food is delicious mm -hmm. because I went to the DeGeorge yes. unit, yep. which is next to Flamingo Elementary, and I went to go see the students eating dinner and I wanted to see how the program worked and I spoke to the first of all the children loved the food I mean it was nutritious food but they were excited about eating it I was like well how's that taste it's great and they were so happy and it was an opportunity for them to socialize with their peers a sit-down dinner the counselors are there it, it's just such a great opportunity so you're getting the socialization as aspect you're, they're learning about the nutritional as I mean, the nutrition and um, they're not going home hungry and then when they get to school the next day, we'll take care of breakfast and lunch. And when you're taking care of dinner, they're getting three squares a day. That's right. And that's so important to their development. We all take for granted, you know, you know I go, my kids waste food sometimes. And, it, and I think to myself, there are so many kids that aren't eating tonight. And you're not going to eat this or you're going to just throw that away. And um, I think a lot of us take it for granted when there's some children who go home and there's nothing in their pantries, nothing in their refrigerators. So having the Boys and Girls Club, having the City of West Park, having the school system, all of us working together, Children's Services Council, we're going to make sure that primary need is met. And that has to be met for the child to learn and to function. And so it's so important in their development. Just a question. Do they happen to have a community garden at the school you were visiting? Uh, there are a lot of our schools have community well, gardens. And that and Boys and Girls Clubs yes. as well. One of the things that we find, again, as part of that nutrition education element, I was in a school uh, one time, and I'll never forget, um, they had community garden, they planted, and they, carrots was a crop, and they were in, and uh, then in they a classroom. And they eat it. We're in a classroom. <laughs> and one of the little uh, boys sitting at the table was looking at it, and I said, I said, you grew, grew that? And he goes, yeah. He goes, I don't know what it is. Hmm. This is a nine-year-old kid who didn't, uh -huh. couldn't recognize a carrot. So you, you know, you've got this education element that is so important. And you're right, food is, is tasty. And if they have their hands on in the process of it, they're willing to try a lot more things. We actually have community gardens all over the district. So it's really important to us. I mean, the kids love it. And it's really important to us that you know, they receive a nutritional meal in school. And that's why this breakfast program and the lunch program is so important. And another aspect that we haven't touched on is the summer feeding, which is really important. There are going to be sites all over this county opened. You don't have to qualify. You don't have to turn in any paperwork. And uh, children are going to be able to go and get free breakfast and free lunch. And I think that's really important right. to touch well, hunger, on. Hunger doesn't end when the school year exactly. goes. Exactly. And for us, it, fact, you know, it gets worse. Yeah. yeah. And for us, last year during the summer, we provided 220,000 meals and snacks uh, during the summertime at our uh, 12 clubs. And it's, you know, again, it's, it's addressing the need uh, that's there in our community, and it's a, and it's a real need.